we go again, and we're back breaking records again in the second hour of the second show of the second season. Here we are, Born a Musician, and I'm Captain Hook, along with my buddy John Seda. We're back. We are back. And uh should say, in this hour, we're going to have a good friend and a, and a fun guy to be around, Roger James. He's re- with us in the studio right now. Roger, how are you? I'm doing great. Captain Hook. <laughs> All right, man. And you, we should say, Roger is an actor, a Native American actor. You can see him weekly on Dry Creek at 730 on the Blue Highway channel, I believe it is. Well, yeah, it is. It's on the 195 on Bright House. Yeah. That, that's yeah, locally. And it starts at 7.30 every Saturday. Right. And it usually and has a message. It's a good show. and uh, You know, uh, a, Les McDowell has done a great job with uh, bringing that more to a family level of watching uh, the old programs, you know, instead of seeing some of the violent things and the, yeah. the rough parts of uh, TV shows anymore. Right. I watched, he's done a great job. Right. I watched it last week, and it, had, uh, it was a thing about bullying in it, and it was... And it was a good, a good bit. And you do a great job in that show. Right? Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> All right. Well, John, <laughs> got, you, got you mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, it doesn't uh, matter. Captain I'll, Hook. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Steve. Captain Don't Hook. Don't tell me I look like him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you. The other night, uh, we had the opportunity. Uh, you joined me and my wife, and we sat and watched. Uh, John played with the Harold Jones band, and it was really something, wasn't it? It was exciting. Um, you, you know, I got to say, when Harold Jones played some of the uh, dear old country music, the whining and twangy, yeah. and, whining and, twangy. <laughs> and I don't mean to put it out that way, but uh, yeah. it brought, when John brought it to a different level and gave it more of an upbeat, yeah. I want to say more like moody blues with country music. Yeah, that's right. And that might sound funny, but it was great. Yeah, it was, and it was uh, when they played Seminole Wind. Oh, they brought and, the house down. Yeah, that was something else. It was and, funny. And John was doing a little uh, echo there and a little pulling off, and it was pretty cool, pretty cool. I mean, if you get a chance to see them, go see these guys and make sure, throw a couple bucks in the tip jar and tell them to play Seminole Wind. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well... Roger, what you got coming up? I mean, I know there's a couple projects that we can't talk about that are pretty much, you know, we're going to keep hush hush for a while. But, uh, but anyway, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, uh, how you got into acting, what you've been doing. I uh, actually I was born on reservation, and uh, to New Mexico, and later on through the years, I moved to Utah, where I was raised with the Christian family. With the Christian family, you know, I went to school, and I was a little bit behind on school. So I had to bring up a whole different level of school. And uh, and it was, uh, it, was, it was very hard. As anybody knows, when you try to learn a different language at that time, and when you uh, live on a reservation, there's no running water or plumbing. And uh, it was a whole different picture for me to come into a world like that. Well, I mean, growing up on the reservation, that had to be t- hard. I mean, you hear kind of horror stories about the way the, the Native Americans have been uh, treated. And, of course, you know, we all know that's true. But the, the reservations, you'd think over the years now, has it gotten any better? Because since, you know, the, the Native Americans have brought in gambling and some some income that they redistribute and, and some tribes share with their people and stuff. But has it gotten any better? It's getting a little bit better, I'm going to say, that uh, where the government has gone, where the Native American has a little bit more control of uh, what they're going to do with their money and the land and everything else. And uh, But, uh, you know, we're still a little bit behind on some things and some issues and stuff like that to work for the Native Americans to uh, stand up for what, uh, what's right and what's, uh, as many Diaz has told you, but, you know, talking about justice. Right. And uh, and as I truly believe in uh, a lot of ways that, um, and that is some of the things. That's 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 the part that I come out in when I come out here. Is uh, when I was raised, I came out here to and the Florida, and when I was out to Florida, I that's when I started my acting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've done it before, but I was more or less doing some extra work, and uh, then I got a chance to do a. A TV series on 
th- called the Crossroads with Robert Urich. Right. And that was, you know, that was excellent. They re- had a good value show all as well. I remember that show. Can you can you still get that show anywhere on the internet or YouTube um, or anything? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Because it did, it, how long did that show run? I believe that only ran for about two years. Right, right, right. And so, g- growing up on the reservation, I mean, you say when you moved, went to live with a Christian family in Utah, did did you speak English at all? I when I came into it, everything was a, a big world, a whole new world for me. Um, How old were you? I I believe I was about ten. Wow. And, uh, and learning everything else, and uh, you see a big ten-year-old wa- uh, uh, learning uh, preschool and <laughs> kindergarten—that was a little bit uh, difficult. Yeah. Like, so like, I had a good family and a loving family that brought me up, and I, I pray God that, that you know they brought me up in that way, and um, I thank God for all that and the blessings. Was that part of when they started separating children from their families? But back exactly. Then, yeah. That's when that they was a pretty hard thing back then. Very well, hard. you know what? It was it was kind of a rough way, but you know, to this day, I'm I'm thankful for that part because if I wasn't, I would have still been with my grandmother taking care of the cows and horses and everything else that we had the we had livestock and we, we had to keep everything going. Now, what tribe are are you from? I am from the Mescal Apache Diné Nation. All right. Okay, and that and that is like what we talked about a little bit ago, is the Four Corners The area. Four Corners in uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. Mm-hmm. Now, um, you know, being there, it's, that's, you know, that's uh, where my name comes from, was uh, Power of Four Mountains, mm-hmm. because of the power of the four to come together in the four states. Wow. So, and that's uh, that's been with me for a while. And I, I just um, have to thank my my ancestors and my grandfathers and grandmothers that uh, blessed me and uh, the, gave me that blessing. Mm-hmm. So uh, growing up on the reservation, I mean, what future would there have been had you not been uh, relocated? I mean, it, there's really what's there for the youth to do on the reservation other than the chores of of being out but you're talking out in the wilderness now i mean you're really out out oh, in the old west you know on some reservations it's still like that uh, like pine ridge south dakota it's in some of the up in idaho and new mexico some of the areas on the reservations still we still have um, places that really need schools and hospitals and clinics and they're lacking in all those things and i you know and you know it's funny captain hook don't get me started about this the that's <laughs> the fine. part of the way the the system works but uh you know it's 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 like uh it's like this is like eating at a table whatever's left over you get to get you get to have and, right. and that's you know that's what i feel the, that the reservation right. gets that sounds to be very difficult to deal with i could understand that. yeah and when you see other people that have come into the country they get all kinds of benefits right. this and that and the What's other and yeah. and still the native americans getting basically screwed right you know? exactly and um, to this day i've been uh you know, I finally got the website to where I can um, do an email to to the government about as far as having a national holiday for Native Americans. It is a good this idea. This has actually yeah. been I've been here for years, and I've seen things go to the moon and everything else. And I to this day, we're still we're still the my you know minorities in our own nation, right? In our own well, state. Well, if you, if you don't mind me ask, if, not changing the subject, but you know, because we, you and I have been talking a lot about music, you know, how did how does music come into your life with all that? You know, music um, is always past. Is this just like I, I was talking about, uh, John? Is um, every uh, you know blessings and everything is handed down from my grandmothers, my grandfathers. Is uh, is uh, music is a big thing to the Native American, like the drum, the circle. Right, mm-hmm. the flute. Everything has its purpose, and uh, brings a lot of the family, and brings all the the heart and soul. Everything that you put in, uh, exactly what you 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 understand exactly what I'm talking about. Right, right. and um, yeah, I'm very touched by that. I mean, it. Um, 
when you hear the chants and and, and oh, yeah. you know and, and it's very deep and and I think what I embrace a lot about what their culture is about is they never how do you say that abused like took more than they needed right and that's what we do right you know you know in other words you're not just satisfied with one cow you want a hundred cows you know they just want to eat have enough for them to eat you know and and so that I I believe in that that kind of feeling you know just use what you need and let it keep on going so you have more for your you know your your ancestors and your families right. that are, are going to come you know? right and they live off the land and hunt i i've a good friend of mine was a former uh um chairman of the seminole tribe here in florida and he tells me i've told me stories about him growing up and uh you know they the only way they ate was to hunt and uh, they they didn't take any more than they needed right and uh, it was really the white man that came in and around lake okeechobee and started screwing things up in the everglades for him well you know if you go think about like and i don't know in your area if you had that or not because i'm not knowledgeable about that but when like say example the buffalo right they yes. eat the meat but then they take the bones for something and then they use this the, the you know the fur yeah so uh-huh. it was, yeah. nothing was wasted you know yeah. everything was used you know the, to its best ability you know, the buffalo was uh, actually everything we lived. That we lived for the buffalo. We followed the buffalo, and right. that took care of us. Um, as you will, uh, we talked about different things of being uh, in soul with one. Right. And the buffalo is uh, is one of the big things for us, including the horse. Right, and especially and the transportation. Uh, winter time out there, the buffalo was a, a necessity. Without the buffalo, uh, winters were hard to survive. Exactly, and that uh, you know you can understand why the Native Americans kind of went into different areas they weren't supposed to that uh, the government's put up, and well, you know whether to, to restrict somebody to one area when you think that part of what they did was migrating only to follow the buffalo, you know, so they, mm. they you know re, re reset up everywhere they went and then to uh, take that all away. That's that's kind of yeah that it's, it's, it's that's wrong. But you know what I think uh, is amazing, and if I, if you've ever ever been fortunate to be at a at a uh, ceremony where there's singing and dancing of native american mm-hmm. style no matter what you know what tribe it is throughout the country it's beautiful it's right. it's beautiful and it's you know b- being a an old rocker myself i kind of get into it. i love the beat and mm-hmm. the, you know and it's good but you know i wanted to touch back on something else you you said that the native Amer- and i never even thought about this that the native americans don't have a national holiday what what day would uh I mean, I have an idea, but what day would you guys w- like uh, the uh, national holiday to be, and what would you like to celebrate? I think it would be more or less in the springtime of, uh, you know, the when you s- start seeing the changes of the from uh, winter, long winter, and, and you see the spring. Mm-hmm. But, well, I mean, you wouldn't, like, say, Geronimo's birthday or something like that. You wouldn't. Uh, it, it would be all the nations all coming together and deciding right. what they – what right. would be the best for the everyone? It makes sense, and though. You know, new, new, right. new right. come in. You know, everything right. is growing again, right? But I could see, going. I could see that that would be like the way it is now because of all the gambling that the that the Native Americans have everywhere. I mean, that would be like a big meeting of the minds, wouldn't it? I yes, it would be like the Godfather <laughs> movie. You know, all the the five families coming together. Yeah. That's exactly. You know, not only just the holiday. You know, I wanted to talk about was uh, wasn't just that. It was uh, mm-hmm. also educating the people, the the non natives of the United States. You know, the that uh, everything has passed from the from as we're a child and it, as we're, as we're we're still living today is uh, from generation to generation. And my job is to teach and to teach my children everything I know as far as my native way. Mm-hmm. And um, you know we might have um, we might have uh, things that we have as far as natives playing in the TV or radio, right? And you know that you know how the system works, and you start with radio and it goes to TV and filming and movies. You know, you know now that the modern technology, everything is traveling a little bit faster, right? And the story is told a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. And I can imagine, you know, back in those days that uh, the news was just traveling so slow. And uh, and now the Native American is just kind of left behind. And uh, and we're slowly starting to come out. And that's exactly the way the system goes. Right. 
And in, and the only way you would come forward is to do it yourself. Nobody, exactly. You know, that, is, that, is, that is the thing that is my job as a, you know, as an actor being here, is to try to more or less bring the Native American out. And I, I've talked to John about this before, and so I'm actually working on a project as uh, John and I are working on the project, bringing a lot of those issues out to where people have a little bit more of understanding with the intermixing with with the cultures and having people understand right mm-hmm. and i can identify with that because you know i, I grew up in puerto rico right mm-hmm. and then you got um, and puerto rico is probably a prime example of all the latin countries right because we're born under an american flag right so we don't have to go through the green card issue or nothing like that but a lot of the people back home are afraid of losing their identity you know and losing their it's like a culture thing mm-hmm. right you know because um, it starts off with language, then it starts off with food, and then all of a sudden, if you keep let it keep on happening, then you eliminate everything that's meant to mean something to you. And what happens? You just wither away, right? You know? So that's what you, you know. Th- that's why we are very close, and we're working on. I'm going to produce a music project, which I'm very honored that he wants to work with me because I've always felt very like a kinship with this, and I explained that to him, and um, and it's like it's not attacking anybody or anything like that, but it's you know. Culture is important, you know, and it's very, and especially in America, we are a melting pot, and it's no matter how many people would want to say different, you know, this is what makes America. But so we should work harder to, you know, to support, you know, ethnic beliefs and their backgrounds, and and not say that everybody has to believe in it, but you know, embrace it. You know, it's like when you go to another country. Why would you go to McDonald's? You know, mm-hmm. I want to eat the food that they make there. I want to. I don't want to eat. You know what I mean? So I. I, I, I don't want to go to McDonald's here. I, well, people. <laughs> well, you know, there's a big thing about if you go to France, that's a big issue. You know, you go to France and, you know, it's always. I don't want to eat the stuff. I want to eat. I want to go to McDonald's. That's like ridiculous. I want you to stay home. You know, watch this thing on TV. You know. Hi, so, and every once in a while, I get a craving for it. So what yeah. can I say? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but going back to it, what I was saying is, in lot, one thing you you're mentioning him being an actor. Well, one, he's an activist also, and he's a speaker, mm-hmm. and he speaks for a lot of events. He actually sp- uh, did a, a nice one at one of Minnie's events. Was a rustic uh, elegance, right? And um, and is, and it's very cool that he can come up and you know speak about these things to educate people. Right. And and you know that's what I believe in music. We need to re-educate. Well, th- th- we need to re-educate in other areas also. I and I think you uh, it's a it's a that's need very necessary. I mm-hmm. think that's you know that that area we we're talking about uh, Minnie Diaz doing that project there. I th- I felt very honored that many Diaz asked me to do that, uh, and I felt that it was my ju- my duty, my job to do that. Mm-hmm. As uh, you see, some of the you see exactly you see some of the people that uh, are a little bit handicapped, or not to the level of everyone else, but they're they hold the laws and justice, and you know there's no justice for them, mm-hmm. and um, uh, many Diaz lobbies for that act to where. They get a fair trial, and they shouldn't be lo- belong in jail. Right. I mean, some of the people getting in trouble, and you know, it follows in the same lines as the Native American. Uh, we get lagged behind in some things, and we're we're supposed to, uh, you know, keep up uh, with the rest of the government. Right. Right. You're supposed to keep up with the rest of uh, society when you're. Uh, it when seems uh, like when the, the, the when the decision is already made for you before you even get yeah, there. and it seems like the government still got their foot on the on the Native American people's neck, you know, uh, you know, exactly. You it know, was all right. We're li- we're talking with Roger James, film actor, TV actor, actor of Dry Creek. We'll be right back. You're listening to WDBFRadio.com. dot <laughs> 